Well, let's catch all of my reviews up for this series. The Mark of Athena. so dumb. Seriously, at least he admits it at the end of this book that he never should have gone to Tartarus alone. Why he even went near Tartarus is beyond me. But let's look at it as a whole. So everyone's finally together. Yes. Oh, I can't. I could not wait for everybody to finally get together. And this one, it is a race against the clock and a chase book all in one. So they're being chased by New Rome because Leo got possessed by a ghost to fire things at them. This is why you need Nico around because that problem would have never happened. Of course, every time he gets captured, it's at the times when they need him. He gets captured right when they need him. Maybe that's why Gaia captured him, because she's like, you know, I sent some ghosts there to possess them. Having the ghost king around, that probably won't help. Go get him. That's pretty much how it went down. So, until they finally got rid of the ghost, thank you, Piper, we, that was like, oh, that was so creepy. Oh, that was so creepy when they possessed Leo, um, Jason, and Percy. Oh, that's so creepy! This is why you need Nico around. Why, do, why is it that every time Nico's not around, their ghosts show up? Seriously. Every time. Every time. But it's a race against the clock because Nico is dying and using these death seeds to stay alive. Well, they're pomegranate seeds, but they keep them alive, I guess. Like, by putting them in a death trance and bringing him to the brick of death. Isn't that lovely? But it's a race against the clock and they have all these fun little adventures along the way. Obviously things do go wrong. They gotta outrun the Romans. Annabeth and Reyna, oh they have a very awesome cool scene in this where, you know, Annabeth like has, you know, all those spiders coming at her. But then Reyna finds her and they're all like attacking each other but Reyna lets her go and stuff. I, I love that scene between them. I really, I really love that scene between them. And then Jason and Percy fighting. Oh, I did not like that. I did not like that. This scene, right? That, that scene, me no like. I, no, I don't like it. Not at all. I don't. So, I don't like that. It was a good scene to have, but I don't like it. And... Like I said, once they finally got the Red of the Ghost, that was like, oh, a good sigh of relief. They had to get to Rome, which took them, well, like a week-ish. So they had to get to Rome. They had some, like, fun stops along the way. We got to see Hercules. He's annoying. Team Leo. <laughs> that whole thing with, um, Echo and Narcissus. <laughs> that was just... Funny. And then they finally got to where they had to split up. And oh, like they had to split up, and I was sitting there like, no, no, you don't split up at a time like this. So you had a Hazel, and Frank, and Leo, which was a weird combination of them going because you knew that there was like that tension with Leo being the grandson of Hazel's like boyfriend or ex boyfriend or whatever. That is, like, weird. I don't know, maybe Nico will, like, summon 
Leo's great, like, Leo's grandfather, so that Hazel could, like, explain to him what happened or something like that. I have no idea. That'd be weird. Somebody's gonna make that a fan fiction now, aren't they? Okay, you guys have fun with that. But that was like the, that tension and then that tension was released but it was like all a trap and when it was all a trap like they were going after like Nico. They were going after Nico. The plan was and Piper, Jason, and Percy were going to get the, find the giants and Annabeth had to go find the statue to create peace. So it was like you're worried about Annabeth going off on her own. You're worried about Leo and Frank and Hazel going to find Nico. You're worried about Nico not dying. You're worried about Percy and Jason and Piper finding these giants and trying to defeat them and wondering what god is gonna help them. And then you're worried for Camp Half-Blood because the Romans are getting ready to storm the place. It was just all over the place and you just felt insane. And then you were also worried about Raina because she left. And she was on their way to their way to meet them. Ah! You were just worried all over the place, okay? And then I gotta bring this up. The soul crushing moment. The this this you know what moment I mean. At the end of this book, that soul crushing moment when Percy and Annabeth just fell into Tartarus. I did not want to believe that it happened. I like I did I don't think I read the last chapter for the longest time. It was like just soul crushing. Like you felt like your soul went to Tartarus with them because you're just you were I was I was reading this and I was like no 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 yes yes Percy Percy got her okay good okay good he's holding onto a ledge he's he's got her and oh no she has that spider web around her no no somebody cut it will you and then you know Percy can't move and 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 Anna is all tangled in that spider web and you're like no and then Leah's controlling the ship and Hazel realizes that and Nico is coming over there and reaching down to pull him up and you're like yes yes Nico's gonna pull him up but then he can't reach and then you're go you're back to no and then Percy is just like gonna stay together and then it, they just fall ah. okay I'm good now I'm good now I'm good now but that, that was just soul crushing and so sad, but it was a good way to end the book and probably the worst cliffhanger ever. I remember the cliffhanger from The Son of Neptune. This one? This one? The Percy and Annabeth falling into Tartarus? No! No! But it happened. So really, all together. So all together, this book, it's a good third book. You gotta have, this book is the one that creates the tension and it begins that like third book. The last the third book I didn't like because I was like get on with it, you gotta get to the, get to the final, the final fight. This, this sets, these two, The Lost Hero and The Son of Neptune, they set it up beautifully. They set everything up perfectly and then this one, this one carried it straight in to the final showdown. This one and the House of Hades, both of them together carried it in to the final showdown for the Blood of Olympus. And I, I gotta say, I love this book. One of, this one is still probably halfway. I like The Son of Neptune a bit better than this one, honestly, but it, I do like this one better than The Lost Hero. It does get slow at points and such, but you still love it. And I still love it. You still love it. We all still love it! Except that ending part, you really begin to hate Octavian in this book, too. You really do. So I love how it continues it. I love how it brings them all together. And it gives them that one goal for them all. Their goal to find Nico. Nico is like the bridge between both of them. Between the Greeks and the Romans, really, because... Nico, like, I know Jason and Percy were supposed to be the bridge and Hera doesn't like Nico, but really, it would have just been so much easier just to have 
Hera would be like, hey, Nico, so I need you to explain Greeks to Jason and Reyna. Okay? Cool? But I get where she was coming from a bit, but still, that would have just been so much simpler. So much simpler. And it would have avoided him having to go to Tartarus, but then he wouldn't have found out about the Doors of Death, and... Uh, so confusing. So confusing. But that is the mark of Athena. Great, great book. Great carrying on and, and getting the quest started. It just forwards ahead right into the ancient lands and right into the quest. So I love it. I love that the characters are developing more. Having so many characters, you gotta still develop them. And developing our old characters, that's even harder. But I love that the Rick Riordan managed to pull it off. So that's the mark of Athena. And that is the end of our book reviews. Wow. I got, I've got everything caught up. And we oh, and we only have one character review for, left for Magnus Chase. It's crazy. Really crazy. But that's it for today. Remember, you can also leave your comments in any one of my videos if you want to say thank you to Rick Riordan for my video on May 3rd. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there's a link to the, in the description to my Sneak Peek and Magicians and Demigods book review. If you want to know more about it, just go to the end of the video after I tell you how many days are left to hear more. So, thanks for watching. Bye!